Hi, welcome to this tutorial on fluconazole. Fluconazoles, um, I've just chose this really because it's it's quite interesting in terms of Senemar spectrum because it's it's an acaryl molecule for a start, but it's also got those fluorines in. And if you're not used to uh, interpreting um, NMR proton spectra uh, with heteronuclei that have actually got nuclear spin themselves, then this can throw you a little bit. So I thought this is a really good example to look at. Uh, this is a predicted spectrum, so it's predicting um, pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, you've got some CH2 groups, uh, you've got two protons on there, and they're coming uh, around 5 ppm, because they're next to the nitrogens. We've also got this OH peak that's being predicted, so let's zoom in on this region and you'll see it a little bit. Okay, so you can see the OH uh, peak there, I've just highlighted it. And of course, it, depending on the solvent you're in, that's going to move up and down. Uh, as it's hydrogen bonded, so the hydrogen bonding takes electron density away from or, uh, that proton, so it will shift around a little bit. Okay, so the interesting bits are the um, heterocycles. So we've got the two protons that are stuck on the heterocycle there. We've also got the aromatic ring here, we've got the benzene ring. And if we zoom in on these signals, we'll see some very interesting splitting patterns. So we'll just do that um, right now, just click on that. Okay, I'll just zoom that up a bit. Right, so this this is really interesting because it, especially if you've never seen um, a proton spectrum which you've got fluorine in. So we've got a, a, a triplet of doublets, if you look at that uh, in close detail, for um, the coupling to these two uh, fluorines here. And this proton here is a, a doublet of triplets. So a good practice would be to just pretend those fluorines are protons and look at the splitting patterns, see if you can match these splitting patterns. The fluorines just um, push the, uh, well, they do push the coupling constants out a bit further. But that's that's a really good practice to see if you can get that predicted pattern. So there's, there's one exercise to do. Now, Let's have a look at the real spectrum. Let's see what the real spectrum looks like. So that previous one was the predicted spectrum. First thing you notice the OH peak is actually not next to those um, CH2s. Now let's have a look. Um, so if you can see here, we zoom in on this predicted spectrum. You can see the OH was predicted to come there, and that's that's not that's not a, um, an issue with the predicting software. It just is. It will change depending on temperature and the solvent that you're in. Also, notice in the real spectrum we've got the solvent peak there. So this uh, reaction, uh, sorry, this experiment, NMR experiment, was done in chloroform, and you might want to reference that accordingly. So you, you've got these uh, extra little peaks there as well. And if you look at the real spectrum, we've got we don't have single peaks for those CH2s. We've got doubling of these peaks, so we've got uh, what look like doublers, and you can see they're leaning towards each other a little bit as well. Okay. Now, the reason you're getting doublets of, of peaks there is because the molecule is actually, um, it, although it's achiral, um, if we change one of those protons, then we'll form diastereomers. We, we've almost got a chiral center there, so we become diastereomers diastereotopic centers, sorry I couldn't say that then. Okay, and we look at the complex nature of the protons in the aromatic ring as well, they're not as clearly defined as we saw in the predicted uh, patterns. So we've still got the coupling with fluorine, so that really is present, um, but it's a lot more complicated uh, than the predicted spectrum, and that's perfectly acceptable. The predicted spectrum will tell us whereabouts the, the protons should come, the type of splitting pattern we should have, but then in reality what you have is a lot of uh, second order effects which will make the peaks look a bit different. So if we look at this peak, these peaks as well for the heterocycles, you notice that one peak is higher than the other, but if you integrate them, and I'm just going to quickly um, calibrate this, that should be two, so if we've got two of these, okay. Just click that down. So you notice that one's a lot higher than the other, but if you integrate them, they actually integrate the same. And it's just because one 
is actually um, relaxing slightly different to the other one and it's it's broadening the peak of the other one but it has it if you do the integration the peak area is the same even though the height's different so don't be put off by having these nice high peaks and, and short peaks. And we'll have a look at the relaxation properties of these uh, protons in future tutorials. So I just want to end this by looking at these little peaks at the bottom here. If you're new to NMR, then these peaks here are actually caused by a coupling of the protons in our structure there to the um, small quantities of carbon 13s that that's present. So you get nice uh, doublets there. So that's it for now. Um, see you soon and we'll look at this in more detail soon. So bye for now.